Hey everybody and welcome back. I'm Eric for President. For those new to the channel, well, I welcome you. You can find links and sources for everything discussed today down in the video description. You can also find timestamps for every story down in the pinned comment or right here. That way you can watch the stories that interest you the most, although I find everything, of course, interesting on this video. Also, if you haven't seen my secondary channel, if you want more of my mug, you can have daily VR videos, small clips, way more opinionated than I am on this channel. Would love to see you there. That channel is down in the pinned comment, Eric for President Clips. And let's jump right into the stories today. Starting off in quickie news, I remember when I got my original Xbox, I found out that you could load MP3s directly on it and listen to music while playing games. And I did that ever since. And thanks to an awesome creator, this is now easily possible on the Oculus Quest. Posted originally on Reddit by Nolan underscore, he presents Nolan Music. Per his notes, Nolan Music lets you play MP3, M4A and WAV files stored locally on your Quest in the background. You can even launch the control panel while a game is paused to make quick adjustments to volume, the playing track, or the current playlist from a folder. Better yet, in the context of voice chat, nobody else appears to hear the music even at full volume. Now, link for this, it is currently on SideQuest right now. Link for that will be in the video description. The creator of it also released the code for it as well, so you can inspect the code of it. The GitHub link for that will be in the video description as well. But yeah, it's... It's a cool little feature. Ever since I found out that you could load MP3s on the Xbox, I've been listening to game music while gaming ever since. It really gets me hyped, especially for action games. It's, it's a cool little addition. Let me know what you think about it. But in another quickie news segment, Echo VR did something very interesting that, in my opinion, is one of the best things I've seen for VR multiplayer done so far. It's a great decision and could easily become the number one game on the Quest. So obviously, Echo VR has been delayed for a bit. However, from the alpha testing reports coming out, it's shaping up very well and may actually be one of the top games for the Quest immediately at launch. This week, developer Ready at Dawn shared the current roadmap. Now first, there's going to be a closed alpha that's currently going on right now, and these are testing at a high level play. The next closed alpha will add more experienced players into public lobbies, and then we will have a closed beta after that, opening up to many who signed up for the full game. But the last phase is what I really like to see the most, an open beta that anybody can join. Although yes, it's been delayed for quite a while, that is the current roadmap right now. Now each stage of the roadmap does not have a specific time frame. They will not move on to the next stage in the roadmap until the previous one is considered a success and done. And uh, that's straight operator moves. I love it. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, but something I really do think about is the multiplayer VR curse is real. Multiplayer VR games typically have quite a bit of trouble surviving and with needing a concurrent player base always higher to have a good time, the lack of demos out there for Quest games, and just money being pretty tight with the world affairs going on right now, I think an open beta is a terrific idea to introduce people to Echo VR, to introduce them to the mechanics, see if they like it before they buy it, and encourage them to get a little ownership of it before it even launches because they'll be part of the beta testing. Excellent move by Echo VR. I think when this game launches, it will be one of the, if not the best game on the Quest because it needs a multiplayer heavy game in my opinion. Let me know yours though down in the comments. But moving on, we have a crazy new high-end headset that is, uh, it's, it's sexy. Real sexy. Welcome to the Star VR One headset. Star VR One is designed to elevate the sense of presence to a whole new level in VR with almost near human eye field of view at 210 degree horizontal and a 130 degree vertical field of view. 90 frames per second and 16 million subpixels combined with the Fresno lenses offer a potential crystal clear visual experience with their OLED panel. In a pretty cool stock feature, the Star VR1 comes with Toby eye tracking, which will also automatically detect your IPD, so you'll have the best image at all times. But if you do want one of these, well, you know, good luck. With mostly all enterprise intentions in mind, the consumer will be waiting quite a bit for that version, which is probably okay since your wallet will be screaming after this. At around an estimated $3,200 for the full bundle, including base stations, unless I want a divorce, this will be a thing of just dreams. So that's the Star VR1 headset. It is a monster of a headset. Would love to hear your initial impressions of it. I will say this, in my time researching it a little bit, I am a little overwhelmed actually because even the reviews Back in the day, while this was still heavily more in development, consensus was pretty good. Everyone who tried it really had nice things to say about it, and uh, you don't often see that with high-end headsets like this. There's usually a lot of criticism, and it seems to be pretty positive. 
Also, this is a glimpse into the future what a very high-end VR headset could do. Will I ever try it? Probably not, I would love to, but I can only dream of what this will do for VR. It's a pretty cool headset and I'm glad to share it. Let me know your thoughts. And for the first time ever, and we're gonna end a video on a subject that I have never covered in one of my videos due to my own fault of my own. We definitely need to start talking about PSVR because with the announcement of the new DualSense controllers for the PS5, we got a little hint at what the PSVR 2 could be and uh, we should not be sleeping on the PSVR 2. You may have seen the new DualSense controller for the PS5, and this may be an indication that PSVR 2 may be even closer to a wireless Oculus Rift S than we thought. I'll get into that in a moment. Now, since I never ever talk about PSVR, for those unfamiliar with it, especially how tracking on it works, the PSVR does use external camera, but operates on the visual light spectrum. The camera pointed towards the player tracks the blue strips of light from the headset, as well as the blue light strips on the PS4 Move controllers or the PS4 DualShock controller with its light facing away from the user. Now you may have noticed where the light bar on the PS4 controllers was on the back facing the console and the camera, the DualSense 5 controller have the light strips upright facing the user and the headset. Now this is entirely speculation, we do not know any of this for sure, but this may give us an indication that with the controller light bar always facing the headset, inside out tracking is a feasible option for the next gen PSVR 2 which has huge VR implications. Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts on everything PSVR related. I know my base who watches these videos, we don't talk about PSVR a lot. That is my bad. It's just not something I like using compared to my index. I just can't go backwards. But it doesn't mean it's not important because with the patents of the PSVR 2 that, or the patents that Sony's put out for a possible PSVR 2, if even 75% of those is true and this does have inside out tracking, you are looking at a possible standard wireless VR experience that is on par or rivaling the Oculus Rift S, and that's a pretty big step up from Sony. Also, it's a big step up because you look at what Sony does. The PS5 logo announcement, just the logo announcement by itself, had more likes on social media in a quicker time frame than the physical appearance of the new Xbox got. That is how firm and Sony fans are, and there's any other company other than, say, Apple right now, we talked about that on my other channel the other day, who can make VR more socially acceptable quicker and get it into more hands. The PSVR 2 with the PS5 may be something to keep an eye on. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. With that being said, that is the end of today's episode. Please leave a like to support this video. It would mean a lot to me. Make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon. That way you never miss an upload. Also, if you have some spare shekels to spare, check out the Patreon. Everything that's getting reinvested back to the channel for giveaways, things like that. And as always, I'll see you on the next one, VR Space Cowboys.